Yo, what's going on everybody? Today I'm back with another service call. And this service call is for two RTUs that are not working properly for some reason. Uh, the guy didn't really specify, he just said that uh, they cool for a little bit and then they just kind of turn off. So this is one of them. The other one is over there. So we're gonna take a look at this one first and uh, see, we're just gonna do like a normal check and see what's going on with the system. So let's get right to it. All right. So this is RTU 2-3. It cools for a while and then for some reason it starts to heat up throughout the day. We're just gonna do it like a normal check and see if it uh, has any cooling problems, issues or anything like that. Oh, that's where I put that. So let me get my gloves on. I wanna say it's probably has something to do with the scheduling, the program. I wanna say it's probably on both. Take off this panel. All right. So already. I see this not sweating like I want it to. It is a little cold, but it's not sweating like crazy. So what we're gonna do is go ahead, we'll hook up some gauges to this, check our pressures. I think I left my jumpers in the band. So I'm gonna have to do some, I'm gonna have to go grab those. Put the high side on the liquid, and then obviously we have our suction. I wanna say this is a R22 system. Let me turn on my gauges. Sound like a freaking breaker popped. I guess it is cooling because it's satisfied. We'll also hook these up too. Now that I got those hooked up, I'm gonna bring on my phone. All right, now that we got everything set up, we're just gonna let it do its thing. And while I'm waiting for it to come back on, I'm gonna go ahead and check this blower, see how the belt looks on it. This is, it says it's an AX26. It's, you can barely see it written on there, but it looks good. Definitely turn off the system, obviously, but I'm just doing this quickly. Belt seems good. Put this door back on. So what I could do is I get my jumpers and then jump out the stat right here. This is my fan. This is my 24. This is my cooling. This is probably common here. And then this is my heat. That wire almost came off. Or we could just do this here. Let me take this off and just put them all together. There we go. Just so we can keep the system running. And now we're gonna go ahead and put this panel back on and get some accurate readings. I'm gonna watch this here. Oh wait, I think we're on 22. We're supposed to be on R22. Let me verify this is 22. Oh yeah, it is 410. All right, so it is a 410 system. Let's switch it back to 410. So here's our superheat subcool, pressures, temperatures. We look all right. Probably could add maybe a little bit more, but um, not going to. Let me check the temperatures. Split, let me get a split temp. We'll determine if this unit is working properly. Probably the condomizer might be open. That probably is not. Doesn't feel like air is being sucked in. Uh, this is our return. That's our supply over there. Let me go to that side. Should be able to poke a hole through here. Oh, there's a hole right here. We'll let this do its thing. If I, ver if I can verify that this is cooling properly, um, I'll go downstairs to the thermostat and adjust the schedule setting because that might have something to do with it because he did mention that the system turns on and cools just fine all in the mornings and once afternoon hits it like cuts out it just starts blowing hot air for some reason well that does that i want to open up the filter and make sure that that economizer is not fully open just, i don't want it pulling in too much hot air from outside because it's already hot enough. And so, yeah, it is showing it's closed. And there's also a jumper on here, the wasp nest on it. This will, tr this right here come in handy. They, they usually come with the units. They'll just trick the system into thinking that it's economizing, but uh, it already has an economizer module in there. So we won't need that. So economizer's closed, belt's good. Filters are clean. Close this back up. Let me check, see what our supply is. I know it went up a little bit because I had it open. I need to wait and see what our temps are. We're at 68, it's dropping back down. While this cools, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my jumper cables. I'd rather do, I'd rather jump out the system with cables instead of tying them all together. There's that wasp, it's trying to look for that thing. And the wasp spray is right here, waiting for him to land. I've been trying to get that wasp, I'm afraid to go in there. There's been wasps coming in and out of this little hole. Oh, another right here. All right. All right. One thing I've been trying to do is 
get a little more comfortable filming in public because I'm still a little shy. I've been taking my camera out to public places and just recording some stuff, just try to get used to the environment. So trying to break that, that little habit of filming alone. We're sitting at 65, which is a little high for a supply temp. I mean, we probably might need to add, uh, we might need to add some refrigerant to the system. Yeah, we're sitting at 19. We need to drop that uh, super heat down a little bit. So we could probably top off the system with a little bit more. So I might need to go back down and grab some refrigerant and my gauges, my other gauges. So let me go grab those really quick. I'm gonna get it set up right here. I'll get back with you guys here in a couple seconds. All right, I got everything set up now. I just need to, I got the tank open. We're just gonna go ahead and purge this. A little bit of refrigerant out. Okay, we're sitting at 79 degrees for our low side and then 96 for our high side temps. And we're sitting at a heat of 20 and a subcool of five. So I have my scale set up here. I'm gonna go ahead and add maybe, we'll start with half a pound. Let me tear this, I'll open this up a little bit. Go ahead and introduce, oh wait, this is in kilogram. We'll go ahead and add half a pound to this. Actually, we'll do one, we'll do one pound to see where we're at. And right there. Okay, there's one pound. We'll let that cycle through. See what our pressures look like. We'll let that run. Let me go check out. See what our s supply temp is now. It's weird. It says it's at 70 right now. It's reading 70 degrees, which I don't know how accurate that is. Now it's, it's starting to drop though, but it was weird that it was reading 70. Okay, let me just make sure this is closed because it's weird that the supply temp is reading 69. Showing it's closed. I don't know where this warm air is coming from. See how this coil feels. It's cold, but I don't think it's that cold. Filter is clean and so is the coil. Yeah, it's kind of weird though. Fan motor is spinning the right direction. I don't know why it's reading like that. So now we're, we have a superheat of 26 and a subcool of seven. Kind of weird to me that acting like that. To make sure I have a good, it's really strange that it's acting like this. We're getting 70 out of this. See, what are we getting on the return side here? We're getting 73. This should be working right going up it's reading the outside air right now okay we're at 99 so i know my probe is working right give it up another minute let me check my pressures 18.67 and then my line temps my low side suction side line temp is 79 which is odd should be way lower than that might need to add a little bit more than what's needed on this uh okay so our super sub core are pretty much identical but my suction temp line, my suction line temp is at 75 now. So I wonder if it has something to do with one of the uh, metering devices, either the TXV or the uh, filter dryer. So let me just throw in what's left in my hose. I closed off the tank and opened up the yellow, or opened up the blue side to remove all what's left in the yellow hose. So when I go to take this off, well, this one's a low loss fitting. It's not gonna blow back really. So I think I'm just gonna stop it right there. We added what, pound and a half, two pounds? Yeah, like two pounds. We'll leave it like that. Let me check these metering devices here. Just find that kind of weird. We should have a way lower suction line temp. And it's not even sweating either. Okay, now it's sitting at 80 degrees. Let me do this. We'll take this panel off, let the system rest. It's just weird to me that it's acting like that. Just kind of restart the compressor from running. Compressor and our 24. Okay, I'll let the system rest for a second. Uh, the blower motor just came off. We're gonna go ahead and kick it back on. Our fan motor's not coming back on anymore for some reason. The fan is not coming on. There it goes, there it goes, it was stuck. All right, well, either we have a bad capacitor, which I think is pretty rusty looking, and there's a dead wasp in there, I think, or the fan motor's actually going out. That's probably why it doesn't work most of the time. Let's see what we got here. We're gonna let these pressures drop down. I might have to cut this video a little shorter today just because I have 22 minutes left on my SD card. I've been taking lots and lots of videos and uh, I'm gonna have to clean, clear off the SD card. Okay, we're sitting at, yeah, I don't know what's going on here. 83 for our line temp. Yeah, see, that's way too high. So let me see, something I can do right now is, 
if we could check this filter dryer here, just see what we're getting across temps. I might need to use my other one for that. We'll do one side. We'll do clamp this on one side and clamp the other one on one side. So we're using our high temp just to do the wire nuts. Okay, that side there. Turn this one on. Make sure that we have a good filter dryer. We'll check this one here. Okay, so now we can check both sides of the filter dryer. Close this back up. Usually, if you have a bad filter dryer, these you don't want these going past each other, uh, differential-wise. If you have like a 86 on one side and 96 on the other side, bad filter dryer. You don't want them more than, I think, three degrees, one degree or three degrees apart from each other. It means you either have a blocked filter dryer or the filter dryer's not doing nothing. Filter dryer's good. Next thing I can check is the TXV. We could check the sensing bulb on the TXV, so let me turn this back off. And we're probably gonna have to replace that uh, capacitor. I'll have to check that, make sure that's good, because that fan motor got stuck. Let's see here. Let's see what, we, what the TXV looks like. It's almost as if the TXV is not really opening. Could be possible though that this like lost its air or its pressurized little sensor, pressurized air, whatever it is, whatever is in there. Oh, geez, unit came right on. Uh, something we probably could do, don't have anything in here, is clean the bowl. Get this back on. Something's happening here. Might write up this TXV needed to be replaced. I mean, it's cold. It's just kind of weird to me that it's not too cold. Oh, well, the temp is dropping after I kind of moved it back and forth from like, I kind of sanded it itself on itself. So let me close this up. I just want to do a little tap on this. Let's put this back on. See if we get any different readings. TXV could possibly not be doing its job correctly. Stuck at 73, that's going down, 72. Okay, I think that's the lowest I've seen it go, 72. See if it'll go even lower when it's going back up. Yeah, usually on a suction line, usually most of the time you see like, you'll see it go down to 58 or 60, and 73 is just really high to me. I'm not sure if that sensing bulb is actually opening and closing all the way as it needs to. It should be opening because our line temp is warm. So it should introduce more cold air, or should introduce more refrigerant to go through the TXV. Yeah, let me see what our split temp is, supply temperature. Yeah, we're only sitting at 69, and then our fan motor, we're gonna check that out. Let me see, yeah. I think I'm gonna go ahead and write up that TXV needing to be replaced. Turn this off. Go ahead and check our capacitor. Let me take this off here. This, this, put all this stuff up. Okay, I got pretty much everything set off to the side. Put my gauges up. Not gonna be adding any more refrigerant to the system. Uh, what we are gonna do, I got this for free too, with my Johnstone bucks. I've been wanting a stubby that you can take apart. But uh, anyways, so I got everything set off to the side. We're gonna go ahead and check this run cap. Uh, we're just going to loosen it up just so I can see what, how many microfarads this is, how many microfarads this is. Might as well just pull it all the way out. And uh, this will probably be the only unit I look at for this video just because I'm running out of storage. Now my battery's about to die and I got 17% left and there's no power to the system right now. Here we are. Here's our, this is seven and a half. Take off our leads here. These off. Make sure you discharge it. The unit's been off for a few minutes already for me, so I didn't have to dis discharge it, but it's always a good thing to do that. A good habit, let me grab my meter, change it to microfarads, and let's see what we get. Oh, 1.2, so we need to get this thing replaced. As of right now, I'll go ahead and replace that, and then I'll probably write up that TXV along with the filter dryer. Anytime you open up a system's line set, you wanna replace the filter dryer as well. So I'm gonna tell that to the uh, property or building engineer or whatever, property management, and let them know. Uh, I just don't think that, personally, I just don't think that TXV is doing its thing. It's not working at 100%. It is working here and there, but it's not actually letting the refrigerant flow through. If you enjoyed today's video, feel free to 
drop a like, subscribe, and leave a comment on the next thing you want to see next or some ideas. And uh, also, we're almost at a thousand subs, which it's it's uh, it's starting to slow down. I've stopped around 825, but man, we're getting there. And uh, I appreciate everybody that subs and likes and comments. I appreciate everybody. Uh, so until next time, until the next service call, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.